Wow, right there. And that's the problem with these radios. For Ham Radio q and I'm Joe, 89 CGX, and uh, we're down in the shack today, and we're going to be doing some testing of um, uh, common HT radios, uh, specifically 2-meter VHF. And we'll be testing them specifically for um, spurious emissions or um, these harmonics on the second and third harmonic that cause um, interference on other licensed radio channels. Uh, additionally, that they're out of spec or they're um, outside the guidelines or the rules that the FCC puts together. Uh, Part 97 does indicate um, exactly how strong those uh, spurious signals can be. Uh, it comes down for HT about 53 decibels below the fundamental um, signal. So if you have a fundamental signal at uh, 146 megahertz at about 10 dB, you have to be below 43 dB, or negative 43 dB, in order to be in compliance with FCC rules. And the way we test that is with a spectrum analyzer. A uh, spectrum analyzer is a device that will uh, test or that will show the signal strength um, based on frequency and we have one here today. This is a uh, IFR A7550. Uh, it's a little bit of an older unit but it still works and it'll be perfect for what we're going to do. So I got a bunch of HTs today. We're going to try them out and we're going to see what they look like. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started with our testing here. This is a Rativus, um What model is this? This is a RT3S. Ooh, yeah, very nice, very nice. And we'll go ahead and we'll take a look here. We got a spectrum scope set up for a 200 megahertz sweep. So this will give us the fundamental and it will also give us the second harmonic and then we'll do another sweep for the third harmonic. So here we go. KD9CJX. And it looks like from what I can see there, we're at about 5 dBs um, for the um, fundamental and I'm not showing a spur on the second maybe just a little bit one right there yep a little bit that looks like it's at about 40 DB but it's kind of uh, intermittent there KD9 CGX okay our next one our uh, next victim here the ubiquitous Baofang yeah I know you love them. You hate them. Here one is. So let's take a look at it. This is a UV5A, or UV5, I should say. And these are the ones that seem to be a little dirty. KD9CJX. Turn my other radio off that I have sitting there. Okay, so I'm showing it about negative 5 dB right now on this one, and I'm not showing a spur on the second harmonic. So, we'll, put, well, I'll actually get a little bit higher there. Let's just say it's at 0 dB, maybe negative 2. Yeah, I'll try to keep these as close as possible to the uh, antenna. I'll say negative two, and I don't show a spur on that one. All right, so a little bit of a newer Baofeng. This is a UV5RA. I don't know what the difference is. Maybe, from what I understand, it's usually always just firmware that they change, nothing serious. Wow, right there. And that's the problem with these radios. So we'll take a look at the fundamental there is at about 8 dB. And then we have a spur on the first, uh, second harmonic at negative 30 dB. So obviously that one is going to be out of spec uh, per uh, FCC rules. Okay, next. A... Tried and True Radio. I love this one. This is my little, uh, to get in the full view, Terra TR7200. It's just a 2 meter uh, DMR analog radio. I really like this one. Uh, I usually keep this. It's not my uh, full time radio. It's usually my backup, but it's a good, real good backup. So we'll try this one. 
And looks like the single strength on the fundamental is at about 8 dB, and I'm not showing a spur anywhere there. KD9 CJX. And last but not least, one of the more popular radios out there nowadays. This is a Yesu FT2 DR. Uh, dual mode, analog, and uh, system fusion. And again, I'll have it just on analog on 5.2 simplex. And a good strong signal there at about uh, well, at least 10 dB. Um, not showing anything popping up on the second harmonic there. Maybe just a little smidge right there, but that would still be way below the 53 dB that we're looking for. KD9 CGX. Okay, so now I've set up the uh, the spectrum analyzer, uh, centered at 440 megahertz. Uh, if we take a look at, or just do some simple math, uh, 146 times 3 is going to give you about 439, so that would be the third harmonic. So if there is a spur on any of these harmonics, we should be seeing it at uh, in this sweep. First of all, our Retivis... Uh, RT3S. Oh, see, now we do have a spur there at about negative 30 dB. And we'll say it's negative, negative 30 there. Next thing is our UV5R Baofeng. Yep, and there you go. Looks like we do have a spur there as well. Yeah, negative 35 decibels, so I think that's going to be just about, that may be in spec. I'll have to double check on the map. Next is newer, nicer sister, the 5A, the newer one that we, supposedly there's better um, filtering and there's supposed to be better um, quality assurance with these bow fangs as they, your newer ones are made. And I can tell you right there, that's going to be a fail. The third harmonic has got a spur at negative 20 dB. That's a pretty strong one, too. KD9 CJX. Next, our uh, Terra TR7200. Again, now this one is only a single, this is only a VHF radio. So um, it's not like there's even a, um, a circuitry in here for uh, 70 centimeters. And keying up there. Nothing there as well. KD9 CGX. And last but not least, our FT2 DR. Here we go again. And the same thing on um, 5.2 simplex. I'll give it a couple seconds. And nothing showing up there as well. KD9 CJX clear. Well, so what have we learned? Well, um, you get what you pay for. Uh, as we've seen, the um, cheaper uh, Chinese radios definitely do have a lack of filtering. They are causing a lot of issues. As you see, especially in the bow things, um, the interference is so bad is that it's going to cause interference on the 440 band as well at 439, 440 megahertz. Um, and when you're in the 200, 292, 300 there where the second harmonic is, that's causing interference in the television band. Uh, and that's not a good thing. Now, the FCC usually uh, bears the responsibility on the manufacturer to ensure that these are compliant with their rules. Now, if you're making a radio, if you're doing a home build or something, then you're responsible for it. Um, it's not, not every person with a technician license and a $30 Baofeng is going to have a $2,000 or $10,000 spectrum analyzer. So you can't really test it yourself. But you should be aware that technically you are still responsible for that. So, and showing here, We've proven that the Baofengs and some of the other cheaper radios out there are not compliant at all. At all. Uh, so keep that in mind next time you're uh, spending your hard earned dollars out there. For Ham Radio Q&A, I'm Joe, KD9CJX73, and thanks for watching.